I'm Trevor Scott. I'm an associate professor in the communication department here at Clemson University um, in my um, 10th year now. In the classroom, I mean, uh, um, I, I'm really big on what I call experiential learning. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'm really big on thinking of education as not just, you know, information dump or, or just sharing and collecting data and, and skills and things like that, but it's about um, creating experiences for the students and sharing experiences with the students. With the students. Um, this, this, you know, can vary from field trips and study abroad to just, um, you know, the act of uh, watching a film together or having a debate together or um, um, going through certain activities that create an experience. I think, I think creating experiences is what I really strive for. Um, increasingly with my classes. Um, I learn from them. I mean, um, teaching um, is uh, uh, every time, you know, it, it's a two-way street and it, it, the process of teaching and, and um, makes you engage with theories and research and methods and ideas um, every time anew. And then the feedback and the discussions and the interplay that I have um, in the classroom with the students also often challenges me, um, makes me think about them in new ways, brings up new things. Um, so I like teaching because it's, it's, it's always different, it's always new, I'm always learning and I'm easily bored. So, um, uh, the, you know, teaching and students keep me on my toes, it keeps things fresh, it keeps things interesting. I hope that we've we've made connections and looked at things from different perspectives and brought in things that maybe you know you wouldn't normally expect to see in a communication classroom. Um, you know, we might be talking about technological um, developments and and you know uh, concerns about social media, uh, and they might not think about how that relates to the movie version of Titanic that was made by Nazis. You know, and, and that just that experience of discovering new things or seeing new connections um, um, nurtures and encourages uh, a curiosity about what other new things are out there in the world. That, that the natural curiosity um, that, that students have, I hope that I um, encourage it and um, that they leave the classroom being even more uh, curious about the world around them. engagement participation i you know i always say that um I, I i use two metaphors for for the classroom or for my classes or my teaching you know one is um it's like a uh it's like travel it's like a vacation i'm your tour guide i have opinions i'm going to say that restaurant's good that restaurant's not good i'm going to show you a path through things um and the other one i must like food a lot because this comes up a lot but the other metaphor i use for the classroom is um a restaurant right you wouldn't go into a restaurant and be like, <laughs> I went in there and I paid for my meal, but I didn't eat it. But the attitude that, um, you know, going, paying to take a class and not doing the readings or, you know, doing a, a quick version on the assignment is somehow scamming the system or scamming the instructor is ridiculous. It's like going into a restaurant and not eating. Um, uh, you're not getting what you paid for. So, you know, I, I sort of orient you know, my classes and, I, and, and those who seem to, to flourish the most in them are, one, are students that recognize that they get out of it what they put into it. So everyone's really different. Everyone comes in. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate about um, um, issues around um, uh, ability, issues around mental health, issues around class background, um, uh, for, you know, from a variety of personal experiences. Um, and so, you know, I try to definitely not take a blanket or a, you know, cookie cutter approach. Um, I try to find out what's, you know, what's going on um, with the student, um, what, you know, looking for what might make things spark for them. Um, and, I, you know, I also sort of believe that um, every class isn't every student's cup of tea. 
Um, I, and I don't expect every student to love me or my class or the material. You know, when I was a student, there were some classes that just I had to take. I didn't care about a whole lot, but I, you know, I would do the work and do the best I could, but they were not my priority. I, and I also, so I, I try to recognize that students have different backgrounds, different challenges that they're dealing with, but also that y'all have different priorities and um, that, you know, y'all have to struggle with, with time management and priorities and, you know, academics and career, gen ed, major, minor, especially in comm. My gosh, we have so many like double majors and, you know, <laughs> you know when, when, when faculty used to advise undergrads, you know, I'd get these students that, had, that were like, you know, double majoring and double minoring and, you know, doing all this stuff. Um, so, you know, I would love every student to, to have a, a, a wonderful, intense experience in all my classes. But I'm also happy to work with students where they're just like, you know, look, I got to fit this into the rest of my life. And, and to, if it's not an issue that they're facing direct challenges, but if it's an issue of like prioritization, time management, working with them to sort of like, okay, how can you streamline this? How can you make this um, effective for you and your goals? You know, I'm happy to do that as well. I've always been a big proponent for it. I like that it online classes are accessible. There are people who want to take classes at Clemson and that want to come to Clemson, but they have jobs, they have families, they can't commute to campus. Um, online teaching is a way that I can reach and help and support students um, that might not normally be able to take our classes, which I think is part of the university's land grant mission. We're here. The reason Clemson exists is to improve the life of people in this part of the state. We are a land grant college. And the more we can make ourselves available and accessible to um, people throughout this region, I think the better job we do fulfilling that mission. So I've, I've always been a big proponent of online teaching. Um, the I guess the specific thing that I like about it is that um, so I grew up in Texas, so I'm not an official Southerner, but you know, I'm adjacent. So one of the things I like about online teaching is in the South, we're very polite and we don't like to talk about, you know, sensitive issues or offend anyone or, you know, we're a little conflict avoidant and I, I get that. I'm, you know, my family's the same way. I understand. And people are often more willing to go there and talk about stuff, um, online the 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 depth and the vulnerability and the honesty and the courage that i get in my online students every every time um uh impresses me um they will go places that students in a face-to-face -face live classroom will not and they do it in a very respectful um, and thoughtful way i'm always very impressed by that so i think that's one advantage that online classes definitely have I miss the spontaneity. So I miss, with online classes, what I miss uh, and that we don't have is I love in the classroom when someone will bring something up that could be unexpected and not on the agenda, not on the syllabus, not, not in the module, not what we're supposed to be talking about that day, but it's important and it's current and it's relevant. And we can just stop everything in that moment and be like, oh, let's go there. Um, in gender communication last year, um, it wasn't related to the topic and a, a student brought up the, um, the alma mater, right? Sons of Clemson and the language in the alma mater. And it was just like, wasn't really related to the topic that day, definitely related to the class. And we wanted, you know, she wanted to talk about it, the class wanted to talk about it. So we were like, okay, that's what class is about today. We're just gonna go there. And, you know, online classes are so, they're structured, I teach them asynchronously, and you can't kind of have that spontaneous moment of like an issue coming up that you want to um, just engage in and follow the students. I try to be really student directed and, and really, you know, take feedback uh, from the students and it's, it's hard to do that in the same way. Made a, a rag brave rug. So I took and it's been taking me the whole time. I, I mean, I started it like in April, I'm still not done. But yeah, I've always been curious about like, it, I don't know why it appealed, but I've always sort of been curious, like, how do you like tear up old t-shirts and braid them together? And I don't know how to sew, 
Um, so um, I wanted to, to do it just using braids and knots. Um, and then what's wonderful is there's like, there's kind of all this, um, you know, feminist scholarship about like braiding and weaving as a metaphor and a methodology and things like that. So it's been kind of awesome. We sit on our front porch every night and some nights I'm out there and I got my bag of rags and I got the rug that I'm braiding and I'm just like tearing up my t-shirts and it's like a ZZ Top t-shirt and an old army t-shirt <laughs> and stuff like that. But I'm like tearing them up and braiding them and I'm just, you know, I'm making a rug. the kind of one-to-one -one connections and warm fuzzies and friendship and companionship and you know you, you can you can do it online but it's not the same and I think yeah just spontaneous um, emotional connections and and moments and um, surprises you know things like that I have two main research areas uh, so I do uh, cultural studies of technology. Um, my last book was on um, uh, the, the contemporary and history associations of electric communication technologies with mental and physical illness. So, you know, the internet makes you stupid, cell phones give you cancer, tele uh, telegraph gives you a sore thumb, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of the technological culture part of my research. And then the other area that I do research in is um, on um, gay male identity, sexuality, politics, things like that. I was, before academia, I was a, a, a novelist and a critic and a fiction writer, and I've been involved in, you know, gay arts and activism since, um, way before most of my students were born. Um, and, uh, so my new book coming out this month, uh, is on the history of, um, feminist women and gay men working together in uh, political activism. So in, in broad equality struggles, when and how have they talked about each other, uh, been viewed as competitors, been viewed as allies, been viewed as in conflict. Um, and um, book includes uh, focus groups that were held at Clemson, as well as um, a whole chapter on the history of um, feminist and gay activism in uh, South Carolina. So it has, the other book had a South Carolina chapter too. But um, yeah, basically technology and then, you know, gender sexuality stuff, although they're both informed by um, feminist theory and gender studies is kind of a big underlying theoretical foundation for me. Clemson's the only place that I've, I've worked since I got my degree. I, I went to graduate school at the University of Washington and at uh, University of Southern California. And so I'm, I'm, I'm choosing my words diplomatically about my alma maters. Um, so I was a teaching assistant as a graduate student um, and, and also taught some standalone classes. But in my experience, I, I like Clemson students a lot. They, um, they are curious, they are ambitious without being too um, entitled. Um, they they kind of don't, they kind of, you can throw a challenge their way and most of them will jump at it, you know? Um, so my experience with students, maybe let's just say unlike other places, <laughs> has been really good um, at Clemson. And then, you know, the university and my department um, have given me a lot of opportunities. I've been able to do a lot of things that I wouldn't be able to do at other schools um, at my career stage. Um, and um, I don't know, they also, they give me space. Like, you know, they, they don't breathe down my neck too much. So yeah, we live in Greenville, although we were faculty and residents at uh, Lightsey Bridge um, for three years. Um, that ended um, last year, actually. Um, so we've, we've lived in both. Um, I don't know, the first thing that comes to mind is cicadas. I, 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 I grew up with them and um, I just, I, you know, and, and being, being at home all throughout this past um, spring and summer and now fall, sitting on the front porch and you know smelling our magnolias and listening to the cicadas and watching the lightning bugs i guess you know that summer evenings are just something i love there was one year this is silly i don't know why it's the, okay i'll give you i'll give you a fun clemson memory so right i live in greenville and actually i live really near Furman. 
Um, and so uh, I'll go uh, running around Furman's campus and Furman has this beautiful campus and Furman has um, swan white swans and black swans and all these fancy waterfowls. And um, one year uh, Clemson had a duck. We had a duck that came and like lived in the reflecting pond for a year and like you know people created social media accounts for it and it was like we were all excited about it and i kind of love that because i was like yeah we got a duck that's our duck man um i don't know everyone had a good uh a good sense of humor and um it was it was an example of kind of the the university spirit and the university community um, that Clemson has is the way they sort of rallied around that. I don't know, it's a fond Clemson memory for me, the year, the year we had a duck. Lucky that you're a communication student because our skills and, and, and areas of knowledge are widely applicable. There's so many different things that you can do with um, the things that we learn and we teach and we research, and there's so many places you can go with them and so many things you can put them at use. So, so be open to all of those possibilities. Um, um, be, don't ever sort of consider like, this is, this is just a you know, training ground for broadcasting or advertising or marketing or something like that. Like, yeah, sure, that's great. And I've, I've worked in those fields and um, you know, it's awesome. But there are so many things that, you know, uh, that you can do with a communications training and expertise. And so just don't, don't close your mind or close your eyes to um, possibilities and opportunities that could be right around the corner or right under your nose, you know, go be, be open to all the different things that you can do with um, a communication degree.